Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and to this time-lapsed version of Rocco the British Bulldog in soft pastel. I hope that you enjoy seeing this come together. If you want to see more videos on soft pastel do check out the rest of my YouTube channel here where I have lots of other help and also over on my Patreon channel where I've got all of my full length tutorials and lots more. Enjoy this. This piece is on velour pastel paper, one of my favourites, and I've made use of my unison pastels almost entirely for this piece, as on this scale I didn't really need much pastel pencil to go into more detail, I was able to just use mostly the big sticks to get enough detail. So as I mentioned, it's quite big. This is 50 by 70 centimetres, so it's the full sheet of velour when you buy it. And it was just perfect for this chunky little man. I really love bulldogs. They've got such great expression and character on their faces. So I was thrilled to get the opportunity to paint my first one on such a large, impressive scale. And I really wanted to make him center stage and take up most of the sheet size. But he was also standing on some very nice dark uh, navy blue gray tiles which I thought were perfect for setting off all of the nice warm orange tones in uh, his coat. So I tried to make that a nice contrast to the dog and I spent the first while of the portrait just working on the tiles themselves. This is the sort of background that I often get asked to create in my pet portraits. I really like uh, using indoor settings where you've got some perspective lines like you do here on the tiles. It just adds another bit of interest to the portrait. And if you're interested in learning how to paint backgrounds, all sorts of different backgrounds, do check me out on my Patreon channel where I release all of my real-time tutorials which are narrated. Some of them have the colour codes popping up so that you can see exactly what colours I'm using. But backgrounds are something that I focus a lot of my tutorials on as I really enjoy creating backgrounds and it was also something that I avoided doing at the beginning as I wasn't very confident with those. So that's something that I've put a lot of work into over the years. And I hope that through my video tutorials I can help other artists take the brave step of adding backgrounds to their otherwise uh, plain background portraits. It's not always necessary, but sometimes I think it really adds to a portrait. So I make a start on Rocco himself. Such a gorgeous, handsome dog. And just as I say that, I can hear my dog barking in the background, as if to say, what? I'm handsome too. Of course, you're handsome, Harry McClary. But we're talking about Rocco. So I make a start on his giant big head. You can see how big this is in comparison to my hand. So bringing in some little bits of pastel pencil here and there. But really, the majority of the work on this portrait could be done just with the bigger sticks. Sometimes when you're working on a smaller scale, it can be a bit difficult to get the, the finer details if you're using the soft sticks, as they're quite a blunt medium and you've got to break them often to find those sharper edges. So my advice if you're just starting out in soft pastel is not to work too small. Try and give yourself a good scale to work on that you're not struggling to get those finer details. The bigger you go, the easier it actually becomes. Especially if you're just starting out with the soft sticks and you're not used to getting those finer, um, more delicate marks with the big chunky sticks. So it's great advice if you're just starting out to try some either some close-up projects or to work bigger overall. 
So I really loved the lighting in the photo reference of Rocco. We've got light coming from the right side, which when you're painting a dog that's got a lot of white on it, it's really good to have some directional light, something that shows the light and the shade. And when the main colour of the coat is white, but you're seeing it in shadow in some areas, then that really invites a lot of other colours that you can use. You can see that I'm just saving my brightest white for the right side of Rocco where the light is hitting him. And then it's all sorts of other lilacs and greens and light greys, light pinks. All sorts of colours went into creating those shadow tones. And of course, one of the most impressive parts of any bulldog or any of the dogs in this family of breeds is their lovely big squishy muzzle. I do love the nose on these dogs and usually it's the trickiest part of these dogs to create. So much detail in the markings on the muzzle, but a lot of fun to create on this scale. So I start just by blocking in some of the main markings using a range of nice warm purple tones and pinks. Quite often you'll find lots of fleshy coloured tones on an animal, especially this type of breed. And of course using a lot of the colours from my Unison Animal set as I did include plenty of flesh tones in that set for just this sort of job. So if you're interested in the materials that I use, as always, I will add some links in my description below. But do also check out my Patreon channel if you're interested in learning more of my techniques from me, as I really break it down into real time and explain everything that I'm doing over there. So just making sure that I keep that lighting effect going, not letting any of my pure white come over onto the left side of the dog, really thinking about my colour choices. And on this scale, because I'm not going into quite as much detail as I normally would, those colour choices become extra important if I want to create the 3D effect and make Rocco really jump out from the page. And I cannot wait to see the big frame that Rocco is going to end up in and where he will finally be displayed. I believe he is a much missed family member and I was thrilled to be able to produce this portrait for his family to remember him by. That's often a part of my job, creating portraits of animals that we loved and miss very much. And I think that's a really beautiful part of my work that I get to create these memorials and something really special to remember them by. I really wish that animals had a much longer lifespan than they do. I wish we could have them in our lives forever, but that's just not the case. So I think one of the beauties of the pet portrait and why it's so popular these days is because of that reason. We don't have them in our lives for very long. And they're just such beautiful, wonderful creatures that we're not ready to stop seeing them. And with the pet portrait, what I hope to do is create a lasting and almost living memory of the animal. So I always feel very honored to create this type of a portrait. And I usually feel like I, I know a little bit of the animal by the time I've finished painting them. And I hope that you've enjoyed seeing this one come together. And that you'll spend some time here on my YouTube channel if you'd like to see more. Please do hit that subscribe button as that helps me out greatly. And until next time, happy passling. <laughs>